Longman Preparation Course for the TOEFL Test, Volume B, Practice Tests, Second Edition, by Deborah Phillips, published by Longman. This is a recording for Practice Test 3. If you are having difficulty hearing the recording, make any necessary adjustments in the volume on your cassette player now. Read the directions in your textbook as you listen to the directions on this recording. Practice Test 3, Section 1, Listening Comprehension. In this section of the test, you will have an opportunity to demonstrate your ability to understand conversations and talks in English. There are three parts to this section. Answer all the questions on the basis of what is stated or implied by the speakers you hear. Do not take notes or write in your test book at any time. Do not turn the pages until you are told to do so. Part A. Directions. In Part A, you will hear short conversations between two people. After each conversation, you will hear a question about the conversation. The conversations and questions will not be repeated. After you hear a question, read the four possible answers in your test book and choose the best answer. Then, on your answer sheet, find the number of the question and fill in the space that corresponds to the letter of the answer you have chosen. Listen to an example. On the recording, you hear, That exam was just awful. Oh, it could have been worse. What does the woman mean? In your test book, you read, A. The exam was really awful. B. It was the worst exam she had ever seen. C. It couldn't have been more difficult. D. It wasn't that hard. You learn from the conversation that the man thought the exam was very difficult and that the woman disagreed with the man. The best answer to the question, what does the woman mean, is D. It wasn't that hard. Therefore, the correct choice is D. Go on to the next page. Now, we will begin Part A with the first conversation. Number one. Did you get the tickets? Yes, I did. Let's go on in because the film's about to start. Where does this conversation probably take place? Number two. I'm ready for the therapy session. Would you mind taking a seat? What does the man want the woman to do? Number three. Can we meet later to work on our presentation? How about noon? What does the woman mean? Number four. I never want to take another test like that again. You can say that again. What does the man mean? Number five. Are you going to be finished with the yard work soon? I just have one part of the lawn still to mow and a couple of bushes to trim. Who is the man? Number six. Can we sit anywhere? No. This section is reserved. What does the man mean? Number seven. Do you think we should bring the camera with us? That doesn't sound like a bad idea. 
What does the woman imply? Number eight. Have you finished washing the dishes? I've been working on my term paper instead. What does the man mean? Number nine. Is it possible to drop a class in the third week of the semester? As far as I know. What does the woman mean? Number 10. Can you turn off the lights when you leave? No problem. Our utility bill is high enough as it is. What is the man concerned about? Number 11. Was the lecture easy to understand? I'm glad I taped it because I didn't understand a single word. What does the woman mean? Number 12. I'm leaving for New York tomorrow at noon. Could you take me to the airport? Sorry, I'm working then. Why not see if Mike can help you out? What does the man suggest to the woman? Number 13. Let's shut down for tonight. It's late. Shut down? But we have so much more to do. What does the woman mean? Number 14. Why don't we spend our vacation in the Bahamas? I don't make enough to do that. What does the man mean? Number 15. Did Bob fix the radio? He took it apart and then left it. What does the man say about the radio? Number 16. The anthem just finished and the game's about to start. Let's get drinks later then. What does the woman probably want to do? Go on to the next page. Number 17. Have you seen the announcement in the lobby? What announcement is that? What does the man mean? Number 18. I heard you were taking a nice vacation next week. Oh no, you're mistaken. I rarely take time off from work. What does the woman mean? Number 19. Is the lecture tonight worth attending? Without a doubt. What does the woman say about the lecture? Number 20. Can you believe how many people were crowded into the stadium? Only once has a larger crowd attended a football game. What does the man mean? Mm -hmm. 
number 21. The travel agent told me about a really good deal on a skiing trip. We'll have to look into that. What does the woman suggest? Number 22. It never occurred to me that you are an athlete. Most people who meet me don't think so either. What can be said about the man? Number 23. Barbara only told me that she wouldn't be in today. That couldn't be all she said. What does the man say about Barbara? Number 24. I can't believe it. All of my exams are finally over. I wish mine were. What does the woman imply? Number 25. The prices on this airline are rather high, don't you think? They seem reasonable for a trip to the moon. What does the woman mean? Number 26. You know, Gary really didn't do a good job on his presentation. I couldn't believe that he was unprepared. What does the woman say about Gary? Number 27. Did the report get finished before you left last night? I wouldn't have left had it not been finished. What does the woman mean? Number 28. I asked Roger if he was going to help us. But he really didn't answer my question. Oh, he's always beating around the bush. What does the man say about Roger? Number 29. Are you still interested in selling those concert tickets? Then you do want to buy them. What had the woman assumed? Number 30. Is it time for the meeting to start? You're here. I didn't think you were going to show up. Why is the man surprised? This is the end of Part A. Go on to the next page. Now read along with me as I read the directions for Part B. Remember, you should not read ahead or turn the pages while the directions for this part are being read. Part B. Directions. In this part of the test, you will hear longer conversations. After each conversation, you will hear several questions. The conversations and questions will not be repeated. After you hear a question, read the four possible answers in your test book and choose the best answer. Then, on your answer sheet, find the number of the question and fill in the space that corresponds to the letter of the answer you have chosen. Remember, you are not allowed to take notes or write in your test book. Now we will begin Part B with the first conversation. Questions 31 through 34. Listen to a conversation between two students. Dora, could you please give me some help? With what? 
I kept putting off my History 101 paper, and it's due next week. If you want to pass the course, you've got to write that paper. I know. I thought that since you're a history major, you could help me come up with a topic for my paper. History 101 is about American history. You could write about the Revolutionary War, or the Civil War, or World War I. Oh, I don't want to write about wars. I don't want to think about killing and death. Can you think of something else? Why don't you write about technology, inventions that changed American history? That topic seems a little broad. Maybe I should narrow it down a bit. Well, you could choose one invention, the telephone or the airplane, for example, and write about its effect on history. I know. My favorite topic is cars. I'll write about the invention of the automobile and its effect on American history. That sounds like a good topic for you. Now, you'd better get busy. You only have one week. Number 31. What does the man ask the woman to do? Number 32. When in the semester does this conversation probably take place? Number 33. Why won't the man choose technology as a topic? Number 34. How much time does the man have to write the paper? Questions 35 through 38. Listen to a conversation about a tragic event. Did you hear the story on the news this morning about the apartment fire down the street? I heard something about it. What happened exactly? A fire started about 3 o'clock in the morning in an apartment complex with about 20 apartments. One of the apartments was completely destroyed and several of the others were damaged. Do they know how the fire started? They're not sure at this point but they believe that it was started by someone smoking in bed. It's a shame that one careless person can cause so much trauma for others, not to mention the thousands and thousands of dollars of damage. Even more serious than the damage to property is the harm to the apartment's occupants. I hear that several residents were rushed to the hospital, but at least none of them died. It's all so frightening. Do you know of anything I can do to keep this from happening to me? I guess the best thing to protect yourself is to make sure that you have a smoke alarm and a fire extinguisher in good working condition. The smoke alarm will give you an early warning that a fire has started, so you can call the fire department. If it is a small fire, maybe you can use the fire extinguisher to help put out the fire before the fire trucks arrive. That's good advice. I think I'll go home and check my smoke alarm. Number 35. What is the topic of this conversation? Number 36. According to the woman, how extensively were the apartments damaged? Number 37. What did the man say about some of the apartment residents? Number 38. What advice does the man give to the woman to protect herself from fires? This is the end of Part B. Go on to the next page. Now read along with me as I read the directions for Part C. 
Remember, you should not read ahead or turn the pages while the directions for this part are being read. Part C. Directions. In this part of the test, you will hear several talks. After each talk, you will hear some questions. The talks and questions will not be repeated. After you hear a question, read the four possible answers in your test book and choose the best answer. Then, on your answer sheet, find the number of the question and fill in the space that corresponds to the letter of the answer you have chosen. Here is an example. On the recording, you hear, Listen to an instructor talk to his class about painting. Artist Grant Wood was a guiding force in the school of painting known as American Regionalist, a style reflecting the distinctive characteristics of art from rural areas of the United States. Wood began drawing animals on the family farm at the age of three, and when he was 38, one of his paintings received a remarkable amount of public notice and acclaim. This painting, called American Gothic, is a starkly simple depiction of a serious couple staring directly out at the viewer. Now listen to a sample question. What style of painting is known as American Regionalist? In your test book, you read A. Art from America's inner cities. B. Art from the central region of the U.S. C. Art from various urban areas in the U.S. D. Art from rural sections of America. The best answer to the question, what style of painting is known as American Regionalist, is D. Art from rural sections of America. Therefore, the correct choice is D. Now listen to another sample question. What is the name of Wood's most successful painting? In your test book, you read A. American Regionalist B. The Family Farm in Iowa C. American Gothic D. A Serious Couple The best answer to the question, what is the name of Wood's most successful painting, is C. American Gothic. Therefore, the correct choice is C. Remember, you are not allowed to take notes or write in your test book. Go on to the next page. Now we will begin Part C with the first talk. Questions 39 through 42. Listen to a talk to university students. Welcome to the orientation meeting for dance majors. All of you in the room should be students who want to be dance majors. Oh, please let me introduce myself. I am Dean Peterson, the head of the dance department. If you are majoring in dance, the most important decision you have to make is which degree you will get. Let me explain. There are two possible degrees for dance majors, and the programs are quite different. One is geared toward performance, and one is not. The first possible major in dance is the Bachelor of Performance Arts. This is a performance-oriented degree. It is intended for students who wish to pursue a professional performance career in dance or in choreography. The second possible major in dance is the Bachelor of Arts Studies. This major is intended for those of you who are interested in non-performance dance careers in areas such as dance therapy, dance history, dance administration, or dance education. Either major is a four-year program, but many of the courses that you take along the way are different, so you will have to specify your degree choice early. I hope this information will help you to decide. Number 39. Who is the speaker? Number 40. What decision do the students have to make? Number 41. A dance major with a Bachelor of Performance Arts degree might be interested in which area of work? Number 
number 42. What is true about the dance degrees discussed in the talk? Questions 43 through 46. Listen to a talk about Cajun country. Now that we're all on the bus, I'd like to tell you a little bit about what we're going to be seeing today. The area that we're visiting is called Cajun country. The Cajuns are descended from the Acadians, French settlers who came from the Acadia region of present-day Canada. They came in the 18th century during the French and Indian War when they were driven from Acadia by the British. They settled in southern Louisiana in the areas around New Orleans. They brought their French culture with them, and today, approximately a quarter of a million people in Louisiana still speak French as a result. We'll be driving by some sugar plantations and alligator farms, and then we'll be stopping at Avery Island. There is a factory there that has been producing Tabasco since 1868. Are you familiar with Tabasco? It's one of the best-known spicy sauces in Cajun cooking, and it's very hot. I hope you like spicy food, because any Cajun food that you eat on this trip is going to be spicy. After Avery Island, we'll continue on to Lafayette, which is the largest city in Cajun country. When we arrive in Lafayette, we're going to visit Acadian Village, which is a Cajun theme park. This theme park offers rides, exhibits, shopping, and restaurants, all with a Cajun theme. Now settle back, relax, and enjoy the ride. I'll point out the interesting sights as we come to them. Number 43. Who is the speaker? Number 44. What is true about the Cajuns? Number 45. What is Cajun food like? Number 46. What will probably happen next? Questions 47 through 50. Listen to a lecture given in a college course. The development of the radio into a worldwide force occurred relatively quickly. In 1920, only 19 years after Marconi sent the first wireless signal across the Atlantic, the world's first radio station was established in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And by 1923, nationwide broadcasting was possible in the United States. Radio broadcasting was initially totally uncontrolled, and each of the dozens of existing stations broadcasted its programs whenever and on whatever wavelength it wanted. The result for listeners, as you can imagine, was often a garbled mess. This confused situation in radio broadcasting lasted until the Federal Communications Commission, which is often referred to as the FCC, was created in 1930 by the United States government. The initial purpose of the FCC was to regulate radio broadcasting. Each station was assigned a wavelength for its broadcast to minimize interference from other radio stations. Number 47. What is the topic of this talk? Number 48. This lecture would probably be given in which course? Number 49. How could the situation in early radio broadcasting best be described? Number 50. 
What do the initials FCC stand for? This is the end of section one. Stop work on section one. Turn off your cassette player.